Hey guys, Mr. Jalapeno here with another drywall DIY. So what happened here is that they had an issue with the plumbing. It was leaking a little bit. So the plumber had to cut the drywall up so he could access that P-trap right there. I think that's where the issue was. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to repair it. First and foremost, you want to make sure you cover everything up pretty good. I don't want to damage that stove or the countertop. So I just put a little drop there and you already guessed it. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Drywall repairs tend to be a little messy. So I try to mitigate that with a lot of plastic. It'll help keep all the dust and stuff inside the containment. That way it doesn't go everywhere. You know, it usually gets on the, on the counters, on the cabinets look i don't want all that dust going everywhere from the multi-tool and the reason why i'm cutting up this drywall is just to square it up a little bit that way my drywall piece fits nice and snug just make sure to remove any screws or any debris that might be in the way i'm just gonna add a little bit more backing for extra support here just be careful not to put the screws in too deep maybe go in like a 16th or a 32nd into the drywall i already put up the drywall piece and just make sure you get the correct size drywall a lot of the times on the walls they use half inch for the ceiling they usually use the five eighths but now that my drywall piece is up i'm gonna mix up a little bit of easy sand 20 i use this little mixer when it's a big batch of quick set and then i'm going to use this fiber fuse joint tape just make sure you pre-fill really good and then apply a little bit of mud underneath the the fiber fuse tape that way that fiber fuse tape is going to stick to the ceiling really good and the main reason why i'm using easy sand 20 compared to like the easy sand 5 is because this is a bigger patch and if this was a smaller patch i would use that easy sand 5 the easy sand 20 just gives me a little bit more time before it gets too hard and as you saw there earlier i use my 10 inch blade to apply it and then i use that level 5 24 inch blade to flatten it out using that level 5 24 inch blade helps a lot with it not being bumpy because if your patch is too bumpy you're going to notice it a lot and remember we want to make it look like there was never even a hole there so if you take all the necessary steps it's going to look really really good if you don't have texture just let it dry sand it prime it paint it and you're good but as you can tell in all of my videos most of the people here in colorado have knockdown texture especially newer homes so i sprayed the texture with the hopper then i let the texture set for about five to ten minutes before i knocked it down i used that magic trial to knock it down and there we go now it's time to remove the plastic and this is probably my favorite part where i know i didn't make a mess and i'm not gonna have to clean everything up because i don't mind just picking up the plastic you know it, it gets harder when you have to wipe off anything off the cabinets and stuff but there we go the homeowner really loved the texture match he's gonna actually have some painters paint the ceiling corner to corner because we couldn't really find a good uh, match for the paint but that's pretty much it jalapeno solutions boom